Okay, so let's start our demonstration of, of the applications. First off, let's start by you know, having all of our devices start running. So what, what you see here is all of the devices from our, our scenario that we described popping up in, in a separate GUI for each, each device simulator. And what we have is for the sensor values, there's a button on the left. All the buttons look the, you know, all the buttons for the simulation look the same, uh, that, that lamp um, icon. And then there's sensor values or the, or the label of the sensor type of measurement and an edit field where if we type in a value, what will happen is that value will be sent as a, as a measurement value to, to the CSE in a content instance primitive. The lamp will toggle on and off when we press that button. And I will show you all this, but first we need to register the devices. And as I mentioned, if I press the button, a content instance will be sent that updates this field, although there's no visual feedback you know, that you, you can see at, at this point. Um, however, for the lamps, we can get some visual feedback. When we click on, on that button, the lamp toggles its value. And in all these cases, um, a content instance is being sent to the 1M to M CSE you know, with this particular measurement value. And in the case of the lamp, it's the status of, of the lamp. Okay, so as we described during the, during the presentations of the slides, what we want it to happen is when a device registers to the CSE, a notification is sent to the deployment application. So, all these devices are now registered and the, de the deployment application should have gotten its notifications. And here's the list of devices that it was notified that were, were created. So what we're gonna do is, as, as we discussed, we're gonna specify information that was not available to the device you know, you know, prior to being deployed. You know, the device, when it started up, it, it, it did not know how to indicate where it was located. Um, you know, it, it could have been done by programming it in the field or trying to get it all right, but what this is doing is allowing us to specify this information um, after the device has been deployed. And I think that's a realistic and, 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 and a good deployment approach. So this is a lamp post on Grand Via 1, so I'm gonna place that. I'll click on the map. When I click on the map, I'm capturing the latitude and longitude of that, of that particular device or that location. And then what I want to do is take that information and put it into a semantic descriptor like what I showed in the presentations. So when I hit submit, uh, my semantic description is sent back to the CSE, and here, here I'm capturing that semantic description as well. What you'll see is the the information that I had in the application template was replaced with the actual location of of where I clicked on the map. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of the devices. I 
think Tedesco is over here. I had to zoom in. Yes, Tedesco's. I just repeat this process. Montero is over here. Montera. And again, as um, selecting these locations, the, the this deployment app is sending a a new semantic descriptor resource you know, you know for this for this application this device to the one end to MCSE and this is this is the demonstration of that portion or that particular application that we we talked about. Um, pretty pretty simple, you know. Again, it had a very limited role in in this scenario of again just providing some semantic information once a device was deployed. So now let's go over to the control application that we talked about. In the control application. In the control application, it's it's, an, it's another map, and in this in this map, what we're in in this control application, we have our query field, and here's here I have preloaded a query, and what this query will do is basically find all the devices in our in our scenario, and when I hit the submit on that, it's going to issue a semantic query to the one end to MCSE. And the response is going to come back, which I show here in in this results box, which has which is um, it, it's all the Sparkle. It's a Sparkle response to the query, um, and the you know it's it's in a JSON serialization. All this information has been parsed in my application so that I could do something with it. So you know one of the things I want to highlight is you know having a query box like this is not what you would expect in a in a normal application it would be some predefined queries that you're executing to find things that you know you're looking for and then you know i'm controlling some of my app my output by specifying these 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 terms that will be returned from my Sparkle query, and I'm able to use this to parse the response that I get so that I can use it, you know, so that I can use it. You know, for example, um, I get the latitude and longitude and the device name, and I, par I parse those out of the response, and then I use that when I place it into the, in, into the map location. So when I hover over these, um, I can see some information. I could have easily gone a little further and put the put the actual sensor values from these devices into it, but uh, that that would have been just a little bit more of the same type of thing, just to parse a different result. Additionally, what's happening with this query is I'm taking all those devices and um, I'm putting them in this list so that we can go ahead and control the devices. So for example, this is a, a lamp, the lamp post that I have selected and it supports two operations, the on, on state and off state. And this is what I'm, this is what I was looking for in the, in the responses that I, that I queried. I was looking for the devices that have an on state and off state. I know this is the section of my, my interface that I want to use to control lights on, on these lamp posts. So what's happening is you know, the query response was parsed such that I, I know when I press one of these buttons, I know what operation to, to send to the one at the MCSE um, or what method to use. And that was one of the things that I put in my original query here. 
also I know based on the method and in the one end and specifications I know if my method is a create I'm supposed to use a content instance for my for the resource that I'm trying to create and part of the information in in the response is also the the one end to m target uri where this command should be sent to so this is a container value that or this is a container that has you know in this case it's one of my command containers of of a light and then also it's telling me what what payload to put in that particular device if i want or in that particular primitive if i hit the off you know, it, it's updating and sending an off value. Now, just to show a, a few different um, scenarios, I'll, I'll take the next, the next light. This has a different set of values. The, you know, the first one was using the lowercase on or the lowercase on and off. And, and this one is using all uppercase. If I select a, a, another device. I'm going to keep selecting because I have a couple different things here. Right, so the lamppost on Montero Street, you, for example, they were made by a different manufacturer and for, and they used, instead of the words on, off, or, you know, capitalized on, off, they used a one for on and a zero for off. And for my GUI application, that is is not important to me because I was able to use the information provided in the one end m base ontology to describe this in my semantic descriptors so that you know, my application now can become more generic and interoperable with a larger variety of devices. And just to highlight the don't care aspect of it, you know, this, you know, in this case, the content is an unexpected value. So again, it, it, it can be whatever, whatever information we put into that semantic descriptor. So whatever that device implements is what we would put in these, in, in the semantic descriptors so that when I issue my queries, I get the appropriate values. So that is the demonstration at part of the um, of this presentation. I thank you for your time, and I hope you were able to get something out of this. the The code for all of this will be available in the in the Git repository of One and M, and you'll be able to see links for that in in the in the notes below when when we get this posted. Thank you and have a good day.